Welcome everyone to the Atomic Cinema Experiment. I am Peter and joining me is Tara. Greetings citizens. And we are feeling just a little bit blobby <laughs> because we're here today. That's why I started my diet today. <laughs> this is a science fiction movie podcast and we're here today to kind of actually make amends for something we skipped without realizing that it existed because we did the blob from the 1950s. We then, a little bit later, did the 1988 remake of The Blob, which was fantastic, which might I add. Mm -hmm. uh, hockey season <laughs> ending months ago, might I remind you. Uh, but we were setting up for 70s month, and Tara happened to notice on the Criterion channel there was a Beware the Blob, dated as 1972. And I went, wait, what? <laughs> and we, we looked up, and yeah, it turns out there was a, a, a loose sequel to The Blob, uh, which and apparently some territories are at least at some point was referred to as son of blob so it's a way better name it, it raises a lot of questions though mm -hmm. and there's already a lot of weird questions asked in this movie based on a couple of choices that I, i'm going to get to in a minute <laughs> um but of course we will start spoiler free as we often do and uh, so yeah 70s month continues and this is you know uh, 1972 uh so i mean first things first as far as 70s month goes we we have one movie left next week, right? We have to get to the vote winner next week, which is Logan's Run. And I am shocked because I don't believe that we have had any Bush yet. <laughs> and this movie continues that trend of no Bush. I mean, we were pretty overloaded on the Bush in the first 70s month round. Oh yeah, I was all bushed out in that first that first batch, but <laughs> <laughs> like, I'm just surprised. Um, although there was a comment that implied there might be some surprise bush in Logan's Run, which I'm not expecting because I feel like Logan's Run's like a PG. But I mean, given what we've seen in some of these other PGs, who's to That's say? That's true. Yeah, <laughs> this film was a double A. I don't know what that means, except that's a that's a type of battery. Yes, it's a type of battery. Yes. Well, did you have to bring in batteries to see it in the theaters? Like, you can't get in unless you give us a battery. <laughs> that's the price. One double A battery. Now, if I remember correctly, that's like a all admittance or something. It's basically the G. It's, mm -hmm. it's a G movie, basically. Uh, which, you know, watching it, I would say that... It's, there's nothing extreme in this, but I, I would say that it wouldn't get a G now. Like, it would definitely no, be at least a PG. No, not after the first scene. Yeah, it would, it would be probably a sort of... Either a late PG-13 or a hard PG. That's kind of where I'd say it falls in terms of modern scale. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, if you wonder what the premise is, there's, there's a blobby su substance that goes around killing people and absorbing people. People discover its weakness by the end and the movie ends. It's, it's, it's the same plot as the original blob, basically. It really is, yeah. And the same plot as the remake. But the remake, at least, is supposed to be a redo of the plot. This one is supposed to be a sequel, but is still kind of just the same plot again. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so... Neither of us have seen this, of course, before. Uh, we'll get into it here. And like I said, we'll start, start spoiler-free. So, Tara, what did you make of Beware the Blob? Um, I'd say it's pretty skippable in the whole Blob trilogy. <laughs> Come on, don't throw the word trilogy around all willy-nilly now. It's a <laughs> sacred word that should be reserved for other series such as Beverly Hills Cop and things of that nature. Mm -hmm. The Transfers Blu-ray collection. <laughs> yes, Transfers 4 and 5, pretty skippable, as we have discovered <laughs> in our bonus episodes. It's, uh, okay, well, it's not it's not the worst. Um, I sort of hate the, the dialogue in it, and that I read that most of it was, not maybe not most of it, but a lot of it was improvised, and I think you can kind of tell. Mm. It's not I, good. <laughs> yeah, I will say this does feel super 70s, and I, I mean, I guess that makes sense, because it's 1972, but it feels... 70s in a lot of kind of negative ways in that the harsh like sound of the audio like the dialogue mm -hmm. all feels like it's kind of like grating on my ears like, at all times um which naturally is worse the more uh shrill the voice is so some of the women in this sound awful to my ears and it's not their fault it's, it's just the way it's been recorded it's the sound quality it just sounds not good um so and it's got a lot of really weird like upbeat like hijinks music in the soundtrack which yeah the soundtrack is not my favorite either no <laughs> it's just it's... it's very upbeat and kind of funky and it's not i don't know maybe it matches the g rating that they or the double a rating that they're going for but it doesn't match like the horror film 
it really comes off as like uh, tongue in cheek slapstick style comedy. Mm. Yeah, no. but it doesn't really match the horror. I don't know. <laughs> Yeah, the tone's kind of all over the place uh, in that sense. It starts mm -hmm. off super wacky and then it kind of like tries to be a bit more serious at times, but then it goes back to being wacky again. Mm -hmm. It really doesn't know. I think the biggest problem with it though, because I do think some of the effects are not bad. I mean, they're definitely nowhere near as good as the, the 80s one, but they're definitely no. a step up from the 50s one. And I think what sticks out to me though is this movie's biggest failing is that, I, you know, we, one of the things we commended in the original was that the... You know, the, the characters were kind of likable enough. You got a sense of the vibe of the atmosphere of the town. Mm -hmm. I think this town has no atmosphere. And I think the characters are all basically paper thin. And I, I, I couldn't tell you anything about any of them. They're, 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 they're nothing. Yeah. Except for the guy who wears the ape suit. I liked him a lot. <laughs> That's only because he's played by an actor who popped up in some other things that we've done. Such That's as Gary Demon Graham. Yeah, from Demon Seed. <laughs> And he's the villain from the Philadelphia Experiment too, and of course his most famous role, the main villain from Police Academy Six, City <laughs> Under Siege. Yep. Wait. He should have made it big time. He's great. I've seen him in three different movies this year by accident. Yeah. All for the he's, ace. He also plays uh, someone from the Q Continuum in um, in a uh, Star Trek Voyager. I love how you thought about saying hit television show and you went, no, it's Voyager. I'm not going to say it for Voyager. <laughs> Voyager was a hit. It had as many seasons as, you know, Next Generation. Yeah, but Walking Dead had like over 10 seasons and that shit, so. <laughs> it was a hit. <laughs> I mean, it was. It was very popular to the point where there's like four spin offs now and movies happening and video games and all sorts of things right. happening. Well, but. it was very good to see Gary Graham, young Gary Graham, in mm. the film. Because he's becoming a, an ace favorite. Him and uh, Richard Lynch. Does he get like a... Because <laughs> they were trying to do those awards occasionally. Does he get like a Cornelius Award for wearing a, a gorilla suit? Well, he, well, Cornelius wasn't a gorilla, <laughs> I suppose. But, but Maybe. None, none, of the gorillas in Pla none of the gorillas in Planet of the Apes were named, at least not heavily. All the mm. main characters were either chimps. Uh, there was or, a gorilla suit in the... Uh, the, the last escape from a plant from the Planet of the Apes, though. There was a guy in a gorilla suit You're just right. playing a gorilla. <laughs> You're right. Yes, quite right. There was. Um, yes. I'm still. I'm, I'm disappointed we're not able to give it the hat award from uh, from Cosmos yet. Uh, again, I'm, I'm, I'm waiting. I'm <laughs> yeah. lying and wait. <laughs> Don't uh, know when that's going to happen. For excessive hat scenes. <laughs> However. Uh, I will say this movie has some excessive beer scenes, but we'll get to that in spoilers when we're talking about the specifics. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but there is excessive Yeah, there's beer. a lot of beer sacrifice, and uh, people are really upset about it. Yes. It, there's, this, there's this trope, and it, I find I kind of associate it with The Simpsons and like, maybe sitcoms of that time, like Al Bundy or you know, other stuff. But there's definitely this trope of like men who just want to drink beer like all the time, and that's all they want to do is just keep drinking more and more beer. Um... And it's just one of these tropes that you get, and there's, there's, it's in this. There's a, there's a guy who all he wants to do is drink more beer, mm -hmm. and all he thinks about doing is how he can consume there's beer like quicker. There's like four characters like that. Okay. Well, no, I thought there was like two proper ones, but to be fair, the snooty guy, it turns kind of out that he might have just been taking all that beer to his work because his work uses it, and that's why he has crates and crates of beer. Mm-hmm. That really makes some sense. I don't mind. He's the manager, so I don't really know why it makes sense that he's bringing all the beer himself. Maybe it's just that kind of you know, it's that you know, family-owned business. It's not have a lot of employees, so he picks right. up some of this Fam family-owned bowling alley. Yes, that serves beer. Yes, I'm sure that that was a thing once upon. Is there a lot oh, of family? It's still a thing. You can get beer at a bowling alley. <laughs> no, I mean the family-owned part. Like they're probably all chains now. They're all big corporations, and I don't know. All they're solace. all closed here. I'm not sure. Of course they're all closed. Do you know how much like pandemic virus you can get into those little finger holes? <laughs> the bowling balls. Yeah. Most people bring their own ball. I mean, for like a league or, or something where people make money from. Oh, sure. Yes. I've never professionally... I, I have been, you know, bowling a few times in my life, but it's always been for <laughs> someone's birthday or something. It's like a work-related day out or something. Uh, none of us ever brought our own balls. <laughs> Yeah, well, sorry, bowling alleys. Hopefully a vaccine comes soon. 
Oh yeah, the bowling alleys are the ones that are hurting most in this time. <laughs> I mean, it's kind of equal to anyone else who relies on, you know, people coming in and using their service. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, anyway, where was I in the movie? I don't know, we're not in spoilers yet. Oh, true, but I mean, like, what was I say? You know, in relation to the movie. <laughs> well, yeah, there's uh, some people who really love their beer. The characters are all <laughs> basically, you know, dry puddles. Yeah, I I don't I don't love this film. It's 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 okay. I do like the effects, like you said. Um, mm -hmm. You don't really get a lot of the blob doing stuff, but it, it does this cool thing where it has like the camera, like the POV shot of the blob, and you can just yeah. see this like rolling jello like thing in front of it as it rolls over people. And I do it, like that effect. I thought that was really fun. Yeah, it's kind of like the uh, the police squad naked gun intro but right. with jello instead of the the, <laughs> the the hood of the car right uh, yeah kind of like that um i do think like i think it looked better like the one thing i'll say that it's better over the 80s one and this is like, the only thing i'll say is better over the 80s one is sometimes when they did those there's a couple of key sequences where it did like a big thing where you saw it squeezing through a lot of places and it always looked like it was thick jelly going through things mm -hmm. where you know one of the one of the few complaints of the the remake was that sometimes it looked a bit more technically and spiky and stuff and it didn't really look like you know blob like anymore it was just kind of right something which is a minor complaint in the grand scheme of things because that movie is a goddamn blast if it's that, so fun yeah that, that's one by comparison it feels <laughs> like i thought it was a lot of really awkward humor like the opening scene with the husband and wife for example like it reminded me of the awkward humor it, it was almost nauseating <laughs> It was so hard to listen to. Yeah, I, I mean, I could really understand half of the dialogue because the, because they were mumbling a lot of it into each other's faces. They were, or they were like all like, like on amphetamines or something. They're so hyped up and like talking so fast, and I I didn't understand the choices. Maybe I, it had to be that they were just improvising. Yeah, I well, there was definitely some improvising going on because the actress who who deals with the kitten had to improvise when the kitten started clawing because you could as someone who has three cats, right? Yes. I know what it looks like <laughs> when a cat is trying to escape and is not happy you're holding it. And this little kitten, she saw holding it in place like, you're going to get food. They're trying to make it look like the kitten wants fed at the bowl on the counter, but she's having mm -hmm. to hold it in place as she like, gets the tin of food out. <laughs> and it's just like, yes. you're forcing this so much. Like, just put the food out. Let the cat wander. It's fine. <laughs> it's fine. This looks stupid. It really does. Yeah. Oh dear. I mean, I didn't hate watching it. it a, I got the odd chuckle as a, you know, a silly B movie, but it is forgettable. Sure. I, don't, I don't think that it's, I don't think it's bad. That's I just hard. think it's, it's not, it's not good. It's hard to watch it after the 80s block. Yeah. That one was like a masterpiece. <laughs> There's one or two scenes that I kind of enjoy for the goofiness and a couple <laughs> of lines of dialogue that I really like, which I will be bringing up. Um, but other than that this one is definitely the one of the three that you could skip and we actually did skip it yeah <laughs> unintentionally. No, nobody gets folded in half backwards and <laughs> sucked through a sucked through a grate or through a, a drain <laughs> very uh, disappointing we, you we also do don't really get to see the blob interact with people very much it's all it, there's a lot of implied death mm -hmm. and gore um which is I don't know, like, I guess that's more of the 50s version, but I, even now on it, I think we saw more of the blob, like, attaching itself to people. I... We have to have a debate, or not a debate, I mean, I don't think we're going to disagree, but I, we have to have a discussion about something that's in this movie, a really curious choice. Early on, the film was a character watching TV, and mm -hmm. what's playing on the TV, you might ask, the <laughs> audience? Well, the original film the blob was playing on the tv which boggles one's mind in so yep, many ways my brain broke <laughs> and it would be fine if like let's say the blob in this was so different and it was just kind of like oh hey lol like you know this is like the, that, that original movie exists in this this world because this blob's going to be sure. very different but it's not different it has the same weakness and everything it's like it, it's clearly meant to be the same if only the thing. folks in this town had finished watching the movie before the blob struck I, I know <laughs> and I, I never really understood exactly where this because he has like a canister it's like a specimen that he's just sort of got in the kitchen with the mm -hmm. blob in it and I think it was that he found it when he was because uh, they mentioned that he was like laying pipe like his job is to like lay this uh, I, big pipe I guess they pipe. went to <laughs> laying pipe <laughs> 
I guess he went to uh, Antarctica with some team of people. <laughs> Why are you so amused at the phrase laying pipe? <laughs> I don't want to get into it, but you can Google it if you like. <laughs> I will. Oh, you may want to cut this part out. Feel free, feel free to continue. So I, I think that he, I, I believe that he went to Antarctica as some part of a team, although he's also a scientist because he brings it back as a sample like a, to do science on. He says he's going to bring it back to the lab. But also, yeah, they're doing some sort of pipeline through Antarctica. Oil? Okay. That's just some dumb American euphemism. I, like, <laughs> when I meant laying pipe, I meant he was literally laying pipe, because that's the thing people right. do. They have to, <laughs> pipe has to be laying, right? I know, but that's why I chuckled. <laughs> I wasn't well, going to get into it. What the? <laughs> it, it was it's just so an, juvenile. It was, a, it was an so innocent thing. Yes, I know. It's just so juvenile. <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> My god. Okay, can you not talk about anything slightly phallic shaped without it meaning sex? Like, what? oh, I put my hot dog in the bun. Oh, sex. <laughs> no? Okay. What were you saying? Yeah, sure was... That's big coming from you. <laughs> Whoa. Whoa. What's that, baby? <laughs> Where have I ever? ever made a sexual pun you cannot find one because it doesn't exist it's never happened literally I never think it happened in the last episode of <laughs> screams i listened to <laughs> well i'll have to see some receipts so moving okay, on okay what about the movie the whole review of the movie yummy what was the word that you wanted the people to write down at the end of that one boobs yeah. <laughs> That's not a pun. B E W B S. Okay, sure. Yes, I, I spelled the fun way. Uh huh. Bibs. Okay. Okay. All right. What were you? I was Call too busy me googling. juvenile. I was. I, I was. I was googling the lane of pipe while you were talking. What were you saying? I was saying how he got the specimen. <laughs> yes. Yes. By laying the pipe. Yes. As we established. Yes. Um. So. Take one and guess what the word's going to be then. But actually, it won't be pipe. I've got there's a word that's offered to me in the movie that I will be using at the end. But if I if the movie didn't give me an obvious one, I'd have said pipe at the end of the review. Um, so stay tuned. <laughs> so I guess we'll go into spoilers because I, 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 I don't know much more the rest to talk about. I, this is one where it's probably going to be a little bit sillier because uh, to be honest, it's kind of just a goofy B movie. Uh, so, you know, yeah, it, brace yourselves. it's sort of set up like half, um, half like we have these characters we're following and then another half is like all these vignettes of the Just blob. random, yeah. Yeah, but they seem random and they don't really build up the town as much as the first film did. No, I, I, I thought I was going to for like a minute because it was interesting as to these Boy Scouts and they run into like the, the, what, the one of the, the main women who's going to see the other guy and I thought, oh, they're all saying hi to each other, setting up all these people who know each other. But then, mm -hmm. like, when the scouts showed up towards the end, I was like, oh, yeah, I forgot there were scouts in this. <laughs> yeah, and that was, uh, the scout, scout master was Dick Van Patten, who's an actor I recognize. He was in, um, Spaceballs. Oh, you haven't seen that. He plays the king in Spaceballs. He probably is in lots of other things, too. Hmm. But yeah, so I will take this time to thank our Patreon producers before we move on to spoilers. Uh, so thank you to Tyler Hess, Cindy Palacios, David Sharp, Born Now, Al Tribesman, Christopher Moy, Brett Williams, and David Brown. They are all our patrons at $20 or more. But you don't have to support us at that amount, do you, Tara? Well, I know if you enjoy the reviews, please check out our Patreon page. It's patreon.com slash TV. And if you donate as low well as $1 per month, you will get access to bonus episodes of The Ace. So you can check out that Transfers trilogy we've been talking about. Um, there's also a back catalog of some pretty fun movies like Free Jack, uh, Judge Dredd, Time Cop. Time Cop, for some reason, is on the bonus episode. Maybe we made a mistake, but that's where you can find it. No, that, that's <laughs> the juicy exclusive that they're going to say, I'm going to pay the dollar to get Time Cop. That's, that's right. the juicy exclusive. The 11 out of 10 masterpiece time travel film <laughs> with cops. <laughs> yes, and if you can't support us on Patreon, don't feel bad. You can hit the like button. Liking is super important on YouTube and helps us out a lot. And it's free and easy. All you have to do is click the button. It's as simple as that. 
Uh, okay, so we'll move on then to spoilers at this point for Beware the Blob. Um, yes. And I'm just, I'm sitting here, I'm feeling sad for people around the world whose job it is to actually install pipes because what do they say when someone asks them a job? Working on the pipeline? <laughs> just just like someone who like, literally like puts uh, like, uh, like packets of fudge in boxes to ship them off. Like what do they say their, their job is? When someone says, what's your job? <laughs> Because they can't say fudge packer. No. But go with this logic since, since laying pipe is now off the table. <laughs> you really held up on this, huh? Look, this movie's not that interesting. I'm trying to keep a running joke going, all right? <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to be entertaining here, okay? Well, the opening scene is somewhat interesting. Oh, it's because okay. the blob's first victim, well, the blob, blob's first victim is a fly. Oh sure, yes, but the, the opening credits is just a montage of this little kitty and the grass just sort of running yeah, around. Yeah, like, why are, we, why are we looking at a little kitten? I mean, it's cute, but... Yeah. Well, except for the fact <laughs> that you know it's probably going to be a victim. It's lunch. Yeah, and sure enough, we see we see some some blob sort of attached to its paw, and you just hear a meow. That's, that's it. Uh, I will say, there's one small moment I did like in this opening scene, which is, so, so the, the husband is obsessed with beer, he just keeps wanting to drink beer, and for some reason... He's not happy with just drinking a can of beer at a time. He empties a vase and then pours multiple cans into the vase so he can then drink the vase. And it's like he's doing it in secret so his wife doesn't see, but when his wife catches him drinking it, she just goes, oh, yeah, and just helps him pour more beer in. And he's like, oh, that's so helpful, honey. What is this? <laughs> these these two people are the most, like, non-realistic people in the whole film. Yeah. I, I, just... I don't know. They They were so silly. They're, they're, yeah, they're weird caricature like characters that I don't even, I can't, I can't even, I don't even know. Maybe that's, maybe that's, these are like sort of tropes you saw on TV all the time in the seventies, and maybe it makes more sense at the time. But to my modern like brain, this just is like weird and makes no sense. Y yeah, <laughs> I don't know about these two. Yeah, um, but I did like that uh, as the the wife is like kneeling down, she's like feeding the cat or something, or she's picking something up. You can kind of see the canister and like, the blob just starting to sort of, mm -hmm. sort of come out the top of it. It's starting to sort of, like someone's pushing it out from underneath and it's just sort of starting to rise up a little bit. It's just, just yeah, a little bit higher. Because she there. took it out of the freezer, so now yes. it's starting to thaw. Yes. Uh, again, I feel like I missed some serious explanation as to why they have a canister of the blob in the freezer. Uh, well, he was out laying some pipe and came back with a... <laughs> With something sticky. Well, to, to, to be fair, we're, we're cracking jokes about laying pipe, but he does try to lay pipe uh, in this scene. Uh, he does. Yes. And they reference laying pipe when he returned from his week away at work laying pipe. Actual pipe, as opposed to the metaphorical pipe. It's so dumb. <laughs> <laughs> you gotta keep track of all the pipes. All, all the plumbing's important, okay? Uh-huh. <laughs> Look... <laughs> Look, you gotta know which pipe you're you're referring to. You know, one, I'm so. What could lead to trauma? I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry that I <laughs> let you know that this was a thing. <laughs> um. Yeah, well, you but you saw, I suppose. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, I I too I enjoyed the effects of the um. Of the canister popping mm -hmm. off and then the blob slowly coming up like a like cranberry jelly <laughs> can yeah. just coming up over the edge uh, that's basically what it looked like uh mm -hmm. so but he doesn't even notice his wife got got because well, the wife goes outside to try and find the cat when the cat's not there and then gets attacked by the blob and screams the husband is so oblivious to this that he's just watching tv and drinking beer he doesn't care mm -hmm. uh but then he gets watching grabbed. blob Watching the blob, and then he gets attacked on his chair, and this is probably the closest we get to like seeing like people actually actually absorbed. Because when the other woman who comes to like pick up the the, the birthday gift for the the main dude, mm -hmm. uh, her boyfriend, she comes in and he's like sitting in the chair and he's just like you know consumed with blob, and he's sort of like he's, he's, his face is kind of half sticking out of it, but he's kind of like you know yeah, it's, it's the most we ever see of it really with a human. But he's not decomposing. No, it's not 1988 blob with the I skeleton. I love that scene that. so much. I know, it's so good. <laughs> it's so good. But so she and this this is one of one of these annoying tropes where she of course is terrified. She immediately runs to her boyfriend to try and explain. They go get the sheriff and 
everything. Well, I say they get the sheriff. So the sheriff comes to see them when they drive past erratically. When the guy mm-hmm. that she almost like ran over when she was driving to her boyfriend is complaining that the, this young woman almost ran me over. Go and arrest her, sheriff. Uh, but regardless, they end up with a sheriff. And everyone just kind of like, doesn't believe her because it sounds this, this ridiculous thing. And don't get me wrong, there was an element in the original film about like the idea that no one believes the teenagers that this is going right, on. Right, because teenagers are troublemakers. Yes. So. Yeah, that was like one of the main themes of the film. I wouldn't say this is a theme of the film. I would say this is just an annoying trope of no one believing uh, this woman. Definitely. And the cops are the worst in this film. There are a variety of bad as well, which is impressive. There's, there's yeah. different levels of bad. Uh, my favourite, though, which is not necessarily a character flaw, it's more just like uh, I, what I think is a filmmaking snafu. And that is that later on in the film, when they're like, uh, you know, they're investigating the bowling alley, uh, there's the one cop who's like sort of investigating around the counters and stuff. And I swear, I swear I'm right about this. Mm. He checks the cash register. I'm not sure if he actually steals any money or not, but it doesn't really matter. My point is, is that. After he's finished doing what he's doing, he sort of looks up and kind of laughs. And I swear that this isn't an intentional laugh. I swear that this is a laugh because someone yelled cut and something funny happened on set and they kept it in the scene as like a as, as a supposed in-character moment. And it isn't. Uh, yeah, it, it's so out of place. Yeah. I know it exactly lo- what scene you're talking about. Yeah, it looks like an outtake. It looks like when you're watching outtakes and they sort of laugh because, you know, something funny happens in the corner of their eye or something. Yeah. Or, yeah, it... It just, it's, but they kept it in. They thought, oh, that smells good. Keep that in. It's natural. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's so odd and out of place. Yeah, it's really weird. Um, so, what's so weird is that I thought the, so the, so the guy that she almost runs over is kind of like an antagonist and that he's kind of always like trying to get the police. In fact, one of my favorite little funny scenes is when he comes by the house where they're, they're investigating this now missing couple uh, that died at the start of the movie uh, because she's complained about it. Uh, eventually this this uh, asshole businessman shows up and he's like, ah, yes, good work, deputy. You've got the the culprit there on the car. And he keeps, he's like, fast work, very efficient. You and the sheriff, you're, you're great. You're great at your job. And he he, he compliments him for about uh, like a good minute before the sheriff's like, okay, you two can go home now. <laughs> and he just starts yeah, to demand. Right? He demands to know, why have they not been going? I demand to make an assistant's arrest. They almost killed me earlier. Uh, kind of thing. Um, so, but I, I thought... He's he, his character, like his like antagonist like character he's probably the best character in the movie because he's the, he's, the, he's the only character who actually has dare i say character <laughs> <laughs> right <laughs> well apart from joe the ape suited party guest played by gary graham does he actually have much character or you just say this because he's him uh i just was totally enthralled with his performance and how great he was in the ape suit uh-huh uh, and he drives a really strange car. He does drive. It's a very old-fashioned looking uh, car. Convertible. Weird looking car. Yeah. But I mean... Convertible is ass- not the best idea when there's a blob yeah. in your town. The asshole businessman is... I, th- I thought... Like, not only does he have the most character, I thought they were going to give him like kind of an arc where he, by the end of the movie he can to learn to like, like and trust the younger people. But oh, yeah? Then at the very end of the film, though, he just starts demanding that people pay for the damages to his place. And he's, he's not mellowed at all. He's still just as much of a dick as he was at the start. That said, though, he was still the, the best you know, character in the sense that he had the most character. Yeah. Actually, my favourite character in terms of actual like dialogue and stuff is by far the barber. We have to talk about the barber. He is so strange. Because <laughs> so so that's that's like seventies young kid comes in this guy who's got this big wacky seventies hair comes in mm-hmm. and the barber sort of leans up and I thought the barber was going to be this like tough no nonsense like I'm not cutting that stupid like pansy hair I'm a military mm-hmm. barber I do like you know buzz cuts and a you know a real man's haircut I thought that's, that's I thought that's what the character was going to be and instead he started talking about how you know like <laughs> here's his sixteenth chapel and how. Uh, like, he said, what he says, um, I don't cut hair, I sculpt it. That's the line. Yeah. He sculpts hair. He sculpts hair. He's a hair sculptor. I think maybe he's even listed, oh no, hairstylist, never mind. Oh, uh, okay. I thought maybe he was listed as hair sculptor. <laughs> but so he, gets, he gets all excited by this guy's hair, and then he's shampooing it before he cuts it. And of course, the scene ends with him, like, because we see the blob coming up through the sink. This is just a random yeah. scene of blob attack, but... He puts the guy's head right into the blob, which I thought was quite funny. I wish I'd seen more of it, but it was a funny concept. Yeah, <laughs> sure. 
<laughs> I would have liked to have seen him pulled into the drain as well. Yeah. We know the blob can do it. We've seen it. <laughs> mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Oh, the legs kicking up in there. Um, yeah, so good. So good. Uh, so Should we just watch that one again. <laughs> after the police have decided there's nothing going on with this missing couple, just call us again if they're not, uh, you know, popped up by morning. Um, basically, like the girlfriend takes the boyfriend to where the party's going to be because it's a surprise party for him. So he doesn't even know about the party they're they're all planning. So she's all upset and she's forgotten about the party because when the door opens, she's like, oh shit, there's a surprise party. And <laughs> this, this scene gets really cruel. Like everyone for some reason feels that like they're trying to like, it, it almost was like a scene from Carrie where they're all bullying her, where they're all like trying to like put hats on her and like popping yeah. bones in her face. And like, I don't know, this made no sense. The, the, the camera gets right up in her face. It feels really in her space and personal. Kids were cruel in the 70s, you know? They're not even kids though. <laughs> they're like 24. <laughs> They're probably meant to be high schoolers. Are they? But they're friends with uh, this couple at the start who are like a married couple. Yeah, that's true. And they do seem older than the rest of them. Hmm. Yeah. I don't know. So I don't well, know. The guy who plays the boyfriend is Charlie X from Star Trek. <gasps> do you remember him? I, you know what? Now you've mentioned that, I can see it. I never thought about yeah. it when I was watching it, but I can see it now you've mentioned it. I was looking at it like, I know this guy. <laughs> He's the one that falls in love with the uh, with the yeoman. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember. That's that's like episode two. He's, he's got like, yeah, like, it's a really all, early one. All the multicolored lights at his face as he's like mm -hmm. in a trance. He's, he's basically glamouring people like a vampire. Would. Yes. Um. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, so basically they carry him around, you know, like crowd surf for a bit, and then he eventually is like, you know what? I'm kind of like annoyed that I can't see my girlfriend. I'm going to go and try and see where she is. No one seems to <laughs> yeah. care that she's like. And tears so he goes and finds her and she's like can we please leave and I i'm going to present to you the the biggest arc of the film the roller coaster ride that was the story of the avocado sandwich yeah right <laughs> <laughs> because this is a three-act story there's a three-act story told in three sentences in this movie and it's all when they're driving there's this driving first i think to the party and it's driving from the party to the the house, but then it cuts away to something else, so then it's when they arrive at the house before the blob attacks, there's another reference to it. So, <laughs> yeah. he says, first of all, when she's upset, he's like, hey, how about we go home, and I'll make you an avocado sandwich. And then he describes a few other things that go in it, but he's really sincere, he's like, I'll make you an avocado sandwich, you'll like that, you'll like that. But no bacon, right? He really emphasizes no bacon, which is really weird, because I feel like the, the thing we all, you know, the joke right now on the internet is that everything's better with bacon. I don't necessarily agree with that, but that's definitely the, the joke, right? That's the running thing people say. And you're vegan, so I know you don't agree with it. <laughs> Just some Satan, please. <laughs> but, and then, uh, after, like, they're leaving the party, he's like, how about, you know, again, in the car. It's almost the exact same shot every time where Harley's sort of hugging him when he's driving. It's like, yes. He's like, you know what, how about when we get in, I'll make you an avocado sandwich with bacon. It's like, really? <laughs> really? You'll do that for me? And I'm like, really? What? I just saw my friends die. Okay. <laughs> I know she starts to cheer up. She starts to cheer up even though she witnessed someone be killed. And then <laughs> after we cut away to something else and we cut back, she is like kind of like kissing him on the neck. And he's like, you know what? <laughs> to hell with that avocado sandwich. I'm like, oh my God, this is a roller coaster. Is it going to be an avocado sandwich or not? I know, right? <laughs> Millennials thought that they created the avocado toast. I think this might be the first... Uh... The first on-screen <laughs> mention of avocado toast. Is, it, is this two avocado sandwiches as what Psycho was to toilets? <laughs> <laughs> I guess so. This must be in California then. Uh, yeah, I think the bowling alley said was uh, is in used to be in Glendale. It's not there anymore. I mean, but. I mean, I guess you can kind of assume it based on the avocado. To be honest, though, all the locations are just like like a building surrounded by desert. It could really be anywhere in the entire like. Yeah western side of the country well southern west I <laughs> yeah so yeah doesn't feel like a small town no it has no character this movie has no character i think that's the, the big thing yeah it's kind of a bummer yeah because the first blob is pretty good and then we get the 80s masterpiece it's such a shame that we skipped this i know that's... Because if we watched this right after the first one, we might have been like, well, here are the positive things that yeah. are better than the first movie. But, you know, now we have to compare it to gold. 
<laughs> it's gold, Jerry. Gold. <laughs> Yeah, so the other two things we skipped over. There's another random scene. There was a couple of like hippies that were at the going to be at the party that end up like, like just hanging out in a pipe. Hold your jokes, yeah. everyone. Hold your jokes. There's no laying going on. Just that's not a euphemism. Just sitting in the pipe. Yeah, not a euphemism. What's not a euphemism? Sitting in a pipe, hanging out in a pipe. I never said it was, <laughs> but the subject of <laughs> pipe came back up. So I was just. <laughs> I was <laughs> I was referencing the other joke. <laughs> oh dear. You try and make a running joke. Tara just wants to take all the fun out of it. <laughs> so. <laughs> I'm just looking at um, Garrett Graham's filmography, seeing if there's anything else we should watch. That's a very unhealthy obsession with Garrett Graham. <laughs> uh, bubbly, not pure, I see. Um, so there's this this asshole cop who dies in this scene who's like insisting I, I and I'm assuming the teenagers also die because they don't show up anywhere later in the movie. So I'm assuming the blob just gets them now too. What are you smelling about? He's gonna be in Babylon Five. <laughs> <laughs> and do check out Oh he was. No no no. What? He's in an episode called Signs Importance. Didn't we already watch that? No, no, it's later this season. It's later in season one. Okay. Whew. All right. So yes, please do please do enjoy our weekly reviews of Babylon 5, which we started doing from the start of the show. We're about five or six episodes in by the time this goes up, so please do join along for the ride. Uh, mm -hmm. See, you got to plug that. you got to plug it when you mention it. Okay. Plug, plug, Next. plug, plug. So, I'll have to plug something else then at the end instead. Yes. There you go. Uh, so, but he's, he's basically insisting upon arresting them for, for getting high, uh, despite the fact that there's literally a call coming over the radio saying, Hey, officers need help! There's someone dying! Or something like that. Uh, but he insists upon, like, holding them up for basically no reason, and then the the blob comes down from behind them and gets them, he screams. But this is kind of the start of the, the bad deaths, where all of it's just like, basically, like, the blob's in the foreground, and the per people, the person in the, for the background screams, and then it yeah. gets away, and that's it. That's the whole death. Uh, but... That's that. Uh, the other one is more notable, though, which is not a death, per se, but we have the naked man in the bath, who uh, is a Turk, apparently. <laughs> I thought I thought it was Russian. I assumed Russian, but he's... Uh, With a little Yorkshire Terrier. Yes. Yeah, the, the dog got it. The dog's dead. If a cat had died in this movie, then the dog's going too. The dog doesn't get spared. <laughs> All right? I'll make that clear. But... Uh, Poor little Yorkie. He basically... He's able to like, get out of his window when the blob's coming into his bathroom, and one of the one of the police officers like finds them running around naked outside, and what is a very high jinx level scene where they're obviously hiding like everything from like, the waist down the entire time, and he's running around yelling in a foreign language, and uh, you know, what's the there's, a, there's a, almost like a flirty line the cop has with them as well, which really stuck out to me as being weird because the uh, oh yeah I can't remember, but there. He and the the cop, their interactions were all a little bit strange. Yeah, because because the the, the 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 chubby naked guy comes up to the, the side of the car, butt ass naked, and mm -hmm. he's like, he says something like, "Oh, I'm so happy to see you," and the cop's like, "I'm happy to see you too." Which, yeah, right. It's a really weird <laughs> line. Uh, but he's he he spends the rest of the movie at the police station. All this is going on. Uh, so after the avocado toast saga. Uh, the blob attacks the car they're in and they're sort of in the car and they, they turn on the air conditioning which makes the blob leave which is the first time that the weakness is the same it's the cold which is really funny because at the end of the movie when the blob chases them from the bowling alley because this big bowling tournament on right and there's a reveal that the guy who's been the asshole the businessman owns the bowling alley because uh, there's one other scene actually when they're driving home mm -hmm. uh, this guy's unloading like just crates and crates of cans of beer and He's got them all piled up, and they roll up in the car, and they're saying, hey, we have to get past, uh, we're going home, and he's, he's a bit of a dick to them, so they just drive through his beer, and it all just crushes and starts spraying everywhere. And was that not upset. the same guy? That's the same guy, yeah. It was? Okay, yeah. Yeah. I thought you were saying it was a different guy, just unloading beer. <laughs> no, no, no. Because no, that's what I meant earlier when I said that it turned out later, when it turned out he owned the, the bowling alley, I assumed then it was just for his work. It wasn't like he was actually oh, yeah. wanting to drink all this beer. It was like, this is just right. stock for the, the business, which makes sense. <laughs> um, but, yeah. But anyway, so yeah, so, so part of one of my favorite shots in the movie is when the, 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 the blob is oozing through all the, the bowling mm -hmm. alleys. You know, we see it come down all the lanes and it's coming out of the, where the pins are. Yeah. There's a lot of good shots of the blob doing that kind of stuff. He comes to yeah. a um, event while like the people who are working on the pins and underneath are 
I said he, like the blob has a sex. <laughs> <laughs> With the, the guys who are who also have interesting banter between the two of them, like one of them plays the piano downstairs and the other one <laughs> won't let him work with his hands because he says you're too beautiful of your hands are played too beautifully for you to risk they're working on these machines they're eccentric <laughs> they're eccentric uh, engineers right um they're very well read and very well um yeah educated mm -hmm. they both <laughs> they're very classy workers <laughs> and um yeah, while they're working on there, you can see the blob coming through the grate, very much like the first film, when it comes to the grate in the movie theater. Mm -hmm. And uh, but I like I like the effect. I like that scene actually. I like those two characters. <laughs> they were ridiculous also, but I like them much more than the other ridiculous ones. Yeah, I think that's fair. I mean, I even mentioned the sheriff. He's just kind of a non-character the whole time. Like he's he's kind of running mm -hmm. around and he's hearing things are going on and whatever. I did laugh though because when when the blob then chases our main, you know, couple uh, and the the the, the owner, right, the, the asshole businessman, and it turns out like, and this is very realistic because there's tons of places that like this where they'll have like an ice rink next to like a bowling alley, like it'll be the one sort of business, and, and there's like mm -hmm. a sign saying uh, ice rink shut down for repairs, so there's no ice in it, right? And the and as soon as the blob goes onto like where the ice rink's supposed to be, all I could think was, oh, this is convenient. Yeah. Right. <laughs> Oh, I wonder how they're going to defeat the blob. <laughs> right. <laughs> exactly. That's my thoughts. Exactly. It's like, well, I guess we know how this is going to end. Now, don't get me wrong. When it established that he has to get across the room to like, the control panel to turn on the ice and turn on the cooling, I There's thought, okay. Tension. Th I mean, it's okay because he seems swinging across, like you know, like he's Tarzan with on a cable, and it's fine. Um, I do think that could have almost been like a longer, more in, you know, more, more intricate because they could have set this up like quite early. This could have been like a twenty-minute like journey to get across the mm -hmm. room because it's so difficult because the blob is covering. All it was. It's, do you know what it is? It's a game of lava when you're a kid and you can't the touch floor the floor. Is lava. Yeah, <laughs> it, it could be an entire fifteen-minute, twenty-minute sequence of someone trying to get across there with that style of mechanic. Yeah, and this blob doesn't have tentacle things no. either, like the no. '80s one, uh, which was not our favorite part of the '80s one. But yeah, that's the only thing we probably didn't like about it, to be honest. Although you do see it stretch out to get the kitten in the very beginning. Yeah, but it's more like a like a sludgy, thick mm -hmm. kind of extension rather than like a, a like a tentacle spike. Right. Yeah. But yeah, he turns it on. The, the the blob freezes over. So there's literally like a it's almost like a like frozen dunes, <laughs> like a vase. Yeah. The, the, blob it, is. It, the whole blob like freezes instantly, which I thought was a surprise. It wasn't like a slow thing. It was just once it. Once one part of the blob experiences the cold, yeah. it all freezes. Yeah, they tried to establish that it would be quick because the, the guy says, oh, when the ice rink's turned on, it, it freezes actually quite quickly. And I'm like, I'm sure that's just in there to explain why this is going to look so quick because they had no intention. It, yeah, of... it's like instantaneous. Yeah. Uh, I, I, I thought it was still really risky, which it proved out to be right, might I add, given the ending. Because when they actually go on, they immediately go and stand on top of it to give like a TV interview and the sheriff's right. are putting one foot up on like one of the humps. And I'm like... You don't know how like safe this is. This thing can come back to life at any moment, and you're just going like, to stand on top of it. And sure enough, it does. Like parts of it start oozing up his leg, and that's we get a freeze frame. Yeah, I like that it's the the studio light that melts part of it. Yeah, and then it slowly oozes out towards him. Yeah, we get a freeze frame. We don't get to see the blob actually. No. Do anything. It's just his face. We'll be like, who? And who? it says the end. Question mark. Question mark. Yeah. So they they kept that from the original. Uh, <laughs> But we have to we have to establish as well that there's actually a big risk that before they, they turn the ice rink on, in fact, even after they turn it on, they have to sort of rush out and tell the, the sheriff because the sheriff was... Yeah, the, the, he's going to explode it with gasoline. Yeah, he actually <laughs> makes the choice. Like, after they get chased, because they try to go in with some riot gear and some shotguns, like, that's going to do anything, right? And one mm -hmm. cop, like, tries to fire his gun at it and gets, gets consumed. And the sheriff comes back out into the rest of the police. He's just kind of like, well, the three people in there, they're already goners. We have to blow this bitch up. <laughs> <laughs> so they're getting ready to actually burn the thing alive uh which obviously as we know would not kill it it would just make it stronger because it's right. the blob uh but this is when the scouts show back up out of nowhere yeah because one kid has <laughs> the, a lighter the kid, the kid who loves his his lighter his zippo which doesn't even get used because it doesn't work anymore so he ends up using a match anyway yeah from someone was, else do you think that scene was unplanned also it kind of seemed unplanned. Like the big deal was that the kid had the lighter, but then you and it worked when the kid handed I mean, it to him. But then it didn't work, and someone gave him a, a match. 
<laughs> I mean, sure. I mean, I mean, they're different shots, and sh surely, surely, if that was a genuine mistake, they'd just reshoot it. Do you really think the improv? Someone just let's just go in with a match. Just, just you know, improv the the back little bit. And... Uh, it's seventies. I'm sure a lot of people had matches on them. True. For smoking. Yeah. Um. But yeah, the, I don't know. Actually, we have to talk a little bit about the uh, the scouts because, uh, the scout the you know, the scout leader is like you know talking to them about a bunch of stuff, and he's like got them learning things, and he's really like annoyingly like making them all say things in unison when he's talking to the women at the start. Mm -hmm. Um. But for some reason, there's like a montage in the middle of the movie where, or it's not even the middle, it's like maybe 20 minutes in, where the kids are all playing with this like string with like two balls. Like you see one kid playing with it and it's like, it's like they're conking against each other. Yeah, they're like clackers. Other. Yeah. yeah. Um, but then for some reason, like a second kid has one, so he gets annoyed again. He goes and he confiscates the second one. And then there's a third kid and he gets annoyed and confiscates that. And then there's a kid who's dual wielding these things and he's doing two of them at the one time. <laughs> and I'm like, what is this scene? <laughs> And what, what is this toy? What the what they play? I, why, I don't why know. They... Just just part of the uh, comedic charm of the town. <laughs> is this what kids did before smartphones? Was these conquer things? They just conk them. Mm -hmm. I guess so. This is the fidget spinner of the seventies. <laughs> <laughs> Did we talk about the homeless? Oh yeah, we have to talk about the, the three homeless dudes. Which again, it's a really random one-off scene where three homeless guys get attacked by the blob. That's all it is. Um. But we have to. But they're who, not random. Yeah, we have to talk about who the three, the three homeless people are. One is very recognizable because the yeah. the old hobo, as credited and uh, oh, actually not credited, uncredited actually, as IMDb points out. But uh, Burgess Meredith is here, another staple <laughs> of our reviews because he's popped up on Twilight Zone a bunch. Right, three times. Yep. So he's there. And it turns out the youngest hobo, again, this is IMDb's wording. I, I wouldn't jump to hobo as a as a title, uh, is uh, the director himself. <laughs> bizarrely and then tara pointed out the, the the middle one which was blew my mind a little bit one. Yeah, the, the medium one, one is uh yeah he's got an eye patch on and he actually comes back in the 88 version <laughs> and he uh he plays not the main villain as in the blob but he plays the reverend guy yeah who's also, a very important hi. character why did you laugh at me saying the middle one and you, you correct me with medium <laughs> when people say middle age no one refers to someone's age as the medium age <laughs> i do and talking about myself <laughs> i'm medium aged <laughs> Heck, you've got a solid two or three years before you can say you're middle aged that's fine <laughs> <laughs> uh it's fine it's fine it's fine you only the lucky ones get to say so. Okay. Hashtag Tara not old hobo. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be I'll be medium hobo. <laughs> um, yeah, yeah. Again, I, do you know what? I'd forgotten to talk about that scene because it is just so one off. Like there's so yeah. many scenes like that that never connect to anything else that it's really. Yeah, easy but to I mean, all them. three of those people are pretty important. <laughs> yeah, yeah. One's the director, one's in the, the better version, and one's Burgess Meredith. Yeah, <laughs> big deal. Uh, and this is before Rocky as well, so this is actually in between, uh, you know, his Twilight Zone appearances and, and his Rocky appearances, which and Rocky's I think what most people, you know, most people these days probably know him for because that's this, that's this franchise that lasted. I mean, mm -hmm. sure, people who are watching or listening to a sci-fi movie podcast with a pair of idiots like us talking about stuff may be bigger nerds and therefore known from a lot of stuff because we know him for more stuff too. But that's true. I imagine your your more mainstream audience might know him from Rocky, and that's about. It. Um, maybe grumpy old men. Joe, you know, I I think I saw that as a kid, but I don't remember any of it, so I couldn't even told you it was in that. Oh, it's pretty good comedy. I think it holds up. Hmm. Okay. Okay. I'll tell you, what doesn't hold up. Leprechaun in the hood. That doesn't hold up. What? That's a real surprise. <laughs> hey, there's some problematic elements in that movie. Even Tim had to stop defending it for a minute and agree that there were some problematic <laughs> enemies. Uh, enemies? Uh, elements. Uh, I recorded that yesterday for Screams, which is why it's on my mind. Uh, you'll get that in a few weeks, guys. If you if you feel Screams after midnight, you can uh, get that yourself. Looking uh, forward to it. Yeah. I think the biggest problem with this... I mean, there's two I mean, there's two real big problems, and there's a lot of little ones, like the weird music and whatever, but pro big problem number one is that the characters are just so bland forgettable i wouldn't even say they're unlikable they're just nothing they're very unrealistic to me like mm. even the the acting is not good for the main 
girl um, in a lot of the scenes. And it could just be the direction. I mean, this guy has not does not have a lot of directing credits. Well, well you mean the main girl who's like, oh, oh, avocado sandwich? <laughs> yeah, <right. laughs> oh, I mean, she died. is a California girl, so that would make sense. <laughs> my friend so died. Checks out. My friend died. My friend died. <laughs> With bacon? <laughs> um the guy charlie x is like he's he's fine but he's like super i don't, I don't know he goes i don't want to say it like he's he's awfully happy for the situation he's oh in. sure yes it doesn't, it doesn't really feel like he's reacting to what's really going on <laughs> I, right because i mean steve mcqueen of course has that 50s like handsome charm that he has and then i think you know yeah he's a leading guy you can tell even in that film and the 80s one doesn't they, they quite have that but i think you know dylan whatever dylan is uh he is kind of cheesy but he's cheesy in the 80s way so he, he kind of works mm-hmm. in the context of that movie i think i think all the characters in that movie for the most part do uh, oh, definitely the characters in this it feels like some of the characters feel like the the, the 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 comic relief from Last House on the Left. Is as bizarre as that sounds, but if anyone who's seen Last House on the Left like knows like obviously that's a really dark movie for all the main plot, but there's a subplot in that movie of these two like cops who are just like buffoons and it's all just played for comedy. A lot mm-hmm. of the, the little comedy like bits of music and stuff in this really reminded me of that. Um Yeah. And I don't know why I'd be thinking about that. That's weird. I, <laughs> so Yeah. Odd. Very odd. As a Garrett Graham fangirl, I was excited to watch this film, but uh, <laughs> <laughs> but unfortunately, this is not his best. Uh, hey, his best film. If we go back to the ages again, you may actually be the youngest person in that category. <laughs> <laughs> I think the next youngest you know, Graham fangirl is Gar- probably in her sixties. <laughs> <laughs> probably married to him. <laughs> oh, the, one, the other one. The one other one. <laughs> <laughs> oh dear i mean i always liked him as a kid in police academy 6 so I, I i'm happy that i'm seeing more of his work now in 2020 mm-hmm. i can't believe i've seen him in three different movies randomly in the one year that's insane. he's gonna show up on your on your list of most watched actors for he the is. year yes i mean i don't know if three <laughs> gets him out of the top five but he's gonna be in that top are you gonna 20. watch child's play 2 uh i don't have a reason to but maybe i should just to give him that fourth <laughs> that fourth uh, slot. There's a there's a comedy sci-fi horror movie called uh, Terror Vision. Oh, I've seen. I've got that on Blu-ray. Oh, maybe we should add that to the list. <laughs> I remember it being quite fun. Um, yeah, that's one that could go either way between Screams and Ace. Uh, so since you're a fan girl of the actor, I mean, maybe I'll lean <laughs> maybe towards we, Ace. We will make an exception. <laughs> and he's in uh, one of your favorites, Chopping Mall. Oh, no, he is. He's in the opening scene. He's mm-hmm. only in one scene, though. Uh, it's kind of a weird inclusion, but yes, you're right. He is there. That you've brought it up. I've been going over his filmography. Yeah. So I'd say him in a couple of other things before this year. Yeah. Shopping mall and... Uh, what do we call it? So... Okay. Good. Mm-hmm. We've learned something. Uh, is there anything else we'd like to add about this movie itself? Uh... I mean, the second thing, um, if people are waiting for me to finish my list, the second thing is not having good blob kills. That was the second thing. Yeah, 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 that's right. Uh, and then there's a lot of minor ones like the music and all these other little things, but for the most part, it's the characters and the, the kills just not being that good. There's the odd, funny, like, a standalone like, character like the barber who's, like, got, like, like just... It's like, such a weird scene. Yeah, he's got, like, 30 <laughs> seconds of just absurdity that it makes him memorable and made me laugh a little bit. Uh, but It is a lot like watching vignettes of people just improvising Uh, Mm -hmm. that has to be what it was because these these characters don't seem like they've been written no (laughs) they seem like they're yes anding yeah yeah it feels like i'm not a i'm not a barber i'm a not a hairstylist i'm a hair sculptor or whatever he says i don't even talk about how your boy gg uh dies he actually drives into the blob unfortunately yeah he does you don't really get to see it though unfortunately he just kind of skids until it because it's kind of in the foreground and he skids out a shot and that's they just see him scream and that's it yeah that's it gone so unfortunately it does not live up to the legacy of the original fun <laughs> 50s movie and no. definitely not of the grisly <laughs> wonderful transcendent so gro- grotesque <laughs> <laughs> um, 
<laughs> you know, uh, the, the Oscar winner, 1988. Yes. Wow. Yes, yeah, so the 1988 one, which is far closer to laying pipe than this one is, ironically. Uh, <laughs> so... <laughs> Ribbed? Uh, so... <laughs> what a great movie. I know. So I want good. to watch that on Halloween. Oh, you should. So good. So good. Um, all right, I guess we're at the point now where we can read it. Uh, we kind of give final thoughts already, but uh, what, what would you... I think so, too. What would you give the, uh, the movie out of 10? Yeah, it's... Uh... It's not. It's not the worst watch. I I know we've been kind of hard on it, but it's unfortunate that we had to <laughs> that we skipped it on to the great one. But um, I think I'm gonna give it a five still. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, it was watchable. I think I have to go a, a little nudge lower. Mm. Not even for Garrett Graham. <laughs> I mean, I don't think he was in it enough. I think if they gave him what he do, I might have been more... Uh... They did keep him in the side of a, an ape suit for a lot of the film. Yeah, because I, I, I didn't know it was him until he took the mask off. Because he, he, right. he's just in the suit for a while. So... Hmm. I'm going to say 4.5. I'm going to just go under the, that nudge under the, the halfway line, I think. Which is, it's, I mean, it's watchable enough, but it's... Yeah. Watch the yeah. one. If you're going to watch one Blob movie, it has to be the 1988 one. Oh, yeah, definitely. If you're going to watch two, watch the 50s one too. If you if you do want to watch all three for completion's sake, and I, I respect that as a completionist myself, and, you know, I mean, hell, we made now a, we can Now we can respect ourselves now that we've yeah. done it. Hell, we, we made an excuse to watch shit like this. We, we gave ourselves a show and said, hey, mm-hmm. this is a thing we do, so we can finish all these weird little movies. <laughs> right. And hopefully find some gems. Uh, so if you made it this far in the review, you can use the word avocado in the comments <laughs> below uh, to let us know. I'm going to make Tara pose for the thumbnail, so here we go. Oh, oh your head's cut off. There you go. Thank you. <laughs> Three, <laughs> two, one, pose! <laughs> oh dear. It's my blob pose. <laughs> oh dear uh so yes uh that has been the blob or sorry but we have the blob i wish i had some pipe i could have been that would have been better oh well yeah because having just random bits of pipe kicking around is something that most people have just right now i have a big old Mm. hole in my wall over here just reach in and grab (laughs) (laughs) a line that's not being used I mean, if, if anything, if you just held up a pipe that you ha- happened to have off camera, I'd be like, wait, who did you bash him with that? Because I'd see it as a weapon. <laughs> what, what, yeah. What, why'd you have a random pipe? Just no pipe, around? just a pipe wrench. <laughs> oh, dear. Um, all right, well, there you go. That is uh, that's Bureau of the Blob from 1972. If you have seen the film, let us know what you think. NZ comments mm-hmm. below. Uh, we'd like to see. Uh, and, of course, we mentioned earlier the like button. Uh, subscribe, you know, all these things, share, share us out. Uh, we mentioned, of course, patreon.com slash TV. Tara, would you like to promote any other content that we do at TV? Well, if you're a fan of science fiction and a fan of Burgess Meredith, please check out our Twilight Zone reviews. We are working our way through classic Twilight Zone. We are in season three at the moment, depending on when you're watching this video. Mm-hmm. And it's been a blast. So check it out. They are reliably weekly, unless something happens. <laughs> <laughs> I love how you said that on the week that I didn't put one out because I was so busy that I I, I forgot that I was supposed I remember to. Remember, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> womp womp. Well, they have to go to a different day now anyway because clearly the, the Fridays that we're going out is is just not working right now with everything else going out. So it'll be on a new day mm. during this during the week. It'll, it'll be earlier. Uh, Babylon Five is Mondays. Star Trek is typically Thursdays that I do with Connor. Maybe Babylon 5 will slot in in that Tuesday or Wednesday slot. Mm-hmm. That'd that's, be good. That's what it'll be. So, uh, But yeah, that is us. So thank you once again. Uh, get us on the Twitters at mailed underscore fuzz for channel updates or at the Ace Podcast for specifically Ace related stuff. Although admittedly, uh, not much gets posted on that Twitter outside, outside of, hey, there's a new video up. <laughs> but, you know. I don't know. I'm not on Twitter. Yes. Yes. One day I'll convince Tara to actually run it and she can like post witty things on Twitter under the guise of <laughs> the Ace Twitter. Sure. 
<laughs> Good luck. Maybe you'd be inspired if you saw half the shit that Tim tries to get away with on the Screams Twitter. You'd be like, <laughs> okay, this seems like fun. I can wind up here. No? Okay, Doesn't seem difficult to do. I... How <laughs> dare you? Exhibit A. Secondly, how dare you? <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I didn't start it off intentionally but i kind of went into trying to do like a john lithgow style of like shocked voice as mm -hmm. i was as i was going on there i don't know <laughs> if i achieved <laughs> i mean obviously in my own accent i wasn't trying to do an actual impression of of the, the man the myth the legend the let's go right <laughs> <laughs> all right that has been the atomic Sim experiment episode 80 something uh, we love you loads. Keep watching science fiction and remember to ask the computer to add salsa. <laughs> but Aki's season ended months ago.